after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salah upon his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was sent as a prophet and a messenger, a bearer of, good, of glad tidings and a warner before the last day, I remind myself and I remind you to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the definition of taqwa is staying away from the prohibitions outwardly and inwardly and to fulfill the commands outwardly and inwardly. And also I advise you and I advise myself to turn in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it is too late. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O oh you who believe, tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha, turn in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tawbah, make tawbah. But not just any tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tawbatan nasuha. He says, turn into Allah and do a tawbah that is nasuha. What does nasuha mean? If we look at the explanation of this ayah according to the early generations, the salaf, one of the explanations is nasuha is that it comes from nasaha thawb, meaning to mend your thawb, to mend your, 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 your clothes. So we've all had the experience of our clothes being ripped and we sew it or we have somebody sew it for us and then we can use it again. It's still a usable thawb. We don't throw it away. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us. Our spiritual state needs mending. And we should never be in a state where we feel like we want to throw ourselves away. Because that's what the shaitan wants to get us to do. He wants to put us in a state of despair. We've all sinned. Every single one of us is a sinner unless he's a prophet and there's no prophet after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam only the prophets are free from sin the rest of us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and knew that we would sin so we should never go into a state of despair of yes from the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's what the shaitan wants us to do when we get when we do something wrong when we do something haram we shouldn't go to the opposite extreme of feeling so depressed that we feel like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive us. Allah will forgive us. And according to a hadith, if there are people that are not committing sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace them with a people that do commit sins so that they can turn in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a tawwab. He is the giver of repentance. He is al-ghafur, the forgiver. He is al-afu, the one who pardons things. If we don't <laughs> go through the process of turning in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we'll never know those true aspects of Allah. We'll never see Him as a tawwab. We'll never see Him as the one who gives us repentance. Now this is not to say that we should purposely commit a sin so that we could do tawbah. But it's to say that once we do commit a sin, that we should go through the process of doing tawbah. And the Prophet wasallam said, that he inni la astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh fil yawm akthar min 70 marra i turn in repentance to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i ask for tawbah from him more than 70 times a day so this is a process that we should be doing constantly all throughout our day and we read throughout the quran so many ayahs that mention tawbah repentance, that speak about the tawwabin, those that turn into repentance, that speak about inaba, turning back to Allah. We see this, we see the hadith, but how many of us know the process of tawbah as a, as a, as a system? And how many of us that know the process are doing it as a practice on a regular basis? The tawbah and nasuha, the complete repentance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to have, one of the early mufassirun from the salaf, one of the early people who gave tafsir of the Quran, said that the tawbah and nasuha is the tawbah that is equivalent to when you milk an animal. The impossibility of having that milk go back into the animal, that's the way our tawbah should be with sin. Once we commit a sin and we do toba, we never go back to it. <coughs> and another example, they said, just like if a piece of wood is burned, you can never return it to its original state 
That's the Tawbah to Nasuha. If we sinned and we did a, a sincere Tawbah, we'll never go back to that state. This sounds difficult, but there is a process to attain it. And the early fuqaha jurists, the scholars from amongst our ummah, they clarified exactly what is the process of Tawbah. And it boils down to four conditions. And we should all know these four conditions and be thinking about it on a regular basis. And this comes out, these conditions come out from taken from ayahs of the Qur'an, also from hadith, and also from understanding of the Sahaba and the later generation. But before going into the, into the conditions of Tawbah, or the shurut, I wanted to first back up and remind us of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two types of forgiveness. One out of the fadl, one out of his virtue. A person could have sinned their whole life and never thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they had iman, they had faith. And on yawm al-qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can say, you're forgiven for everything you did. And that person never did Tawbah. They never thought about Allah. They never cared about Allah, but they believed in Allah. And out of his fadl, out of his virtue, he can forgive everything except for shirk. Except for associating partners. As long as a person leaves this dunya with one ounce of iman, they can be forgiven for everything. So we should never write anybody off. We never write anybody off because first of all, we don't know who left the dunya with iman. A person, as according to the hadith, might spend their whole life in disobedience of Allah, in disbelief of Allah, but that instant before death, they become a believer. And there's a people that spend their whole life in belief and in good actions, and that instant before death, they leave Islam. So we never have full 100% yaqeen of a person's state afterwards. So we should never say, that person is in hell, or that person is in hell. The only person that it is allowed for us to say they are in hell is if Allah told us through the Qur'an or through the Hadith. And these are very few people that we actually know. Fir'aun is one of them. Abu Lahab is one of them. His wife is one of them. And a few other people that are mentioned in the Qur'an. That's it. We can't say, oh, that person's going to hell. And I'm not going to mention specific individuals throughout history, but just think of some of the worst people. See, think of some of the worst people that, that did every type of possible harm. We cannot even say that those people are in, in a state of, um, um, uh, in, the, in the hellfire. And there's even rulers in our day and age that once they pass away or get, um, um, or get executed or whatever it is, people say, oh, he's going to hell. What do we know? We can never write anybody off that that person is going to hell unless Allah told us that, that that's going to happen. So Allah can forgive everything out of his fadl. The other type of forgiveness comes from us actually doing something, from doing an action. We are, many of us have heard the hadith that when you walk to the masjid, as you've walked to the masjid today, every single step that you take to the masjid removes one of your sins. Every droplet of water that comes off of your limbs from wudu removes a sin. These are actions that we could be gaining forgiveness even if we don't realize the sins that we committed. But this is only for sins that are the minor sins, not the big sins, like murder and alcohol and gambling and backbiting. And there's a list of the bigger sins, the kaba'ir. This is for the sagha'ir. Those actions remove the sagha'ir. Also, by staying away from the big haram, Allah removes the little haram. So these are things that are happening with us without even realizing it. The other type of action that removes sins is Tawbah. And this requires a conscious effort on our parts. We have to actually think about the sins that we've done and go through the process of Tawbah. And this is applicable to two types of sins. The Kaba'ir, the big sins that cannot be removed by good actions and by habits. And this is the main thing that we should th be thinking about after this khutbah, is habits. If we have taken a sin as a habit, it's become habitual, the only way to break it is through a conscious process of unbreaking that. And that's what Tawbah is. We have to break these habits. We all have habits. 
We have habits in our deen. We have it, habits in our dunya. Forth to work on a particular route. You all know that you get into a habit of driving. You don't even have to think about it anymore. It just happens. You can take the right exit, stop at the pro proper places, do everything. It's all habitual because it's become a habit. You're not even thinking about it. In the dunya, it's not that bad of a problem. Although sometimes it is. Where it really is a problem is in our deen. And this status of being in a state where we're doing things habitually and not thinking about what we're doing is called ghafla, heedlessness. And it's one of the root causes of all diseases. <coughs> We've all had the experience of when we prayed, or I won't say all, but many of us have had the experience of, of when we pray. And we go through the entire prayer and we do everything. The fard, the sunnah, the mandub, every aspect of the prayer, we're doing it right. Outwardly, if somebody looked at us, they would say, Masha Allah, they did a good prayer. Inwardly, we were thinking we were on the other side of the world. We were thinking about something else. But we performed everything. How did that happen? Because we got into a habit of doing that prayer in that proper way. We're not thinking about it. And then we're not getting the benefit out of the, that prayer. In the same way, we could be in a process of doing a haram action, of doing a sin, and we're not even realizing it. We're not even realizing the harms that can come to us out of that sin. So the way to break this habit, the way to break this state of ghafla, of heedlessness, is through Toba. Toba has four conditions. The first one is an nadama, remorse. And the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, Tawbah to nadam. Tawbah is nadam. If we want to break Tawbah down, repentance, down to one thing, it is nadama, having remorse. And this is similar in a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, al hajju Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. We know that there's many aspects of Hajj. But if you want to boil it down to the core of what Hajj is, the hadith says, al hajj Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. This doesn't mean that if we just do Arafah, the rest of our Hajj is correct. There are other aspects of the Hajj. But what it means is that that's the core of the Hajj. That we should make sure that that's the core that we build everything else around. So in the same way, Tawbah and Nadam. Tawbah, repentance, is Nadam. That is the heart, the core of the process of Tawbah, is remorse. What is this remorse? This remorse is that we are leaving this action because we feel a sorrow in our heart for doing it. There are some things people leave because of health reasons. There are some things people leave, I'm talking about sins, some sins that people leave because of health reasons. Somebody might stop drinking alcohol because the doctor said it's bad for you. So now he left alcohol. Did he do toba? No. Because he has not done the first shart, the first condition of toba. There has to be remorse. There are people that leave haram because they don't have access to it. They don't have the money anymore to, 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 to fund their sin. So when they stop doing the sin, have they done Toba? No, Toba is a conscious, uh, uh, a conscious effort. We have to think about it. If we don't have remorse, we don't have Toba. So that person might have outwardly left that action years ago. But if they never had remorse over what happened, the Toba has never happened. And so they are still in a state of sin. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that state. The second shart, the second condition, is that we have an intention to never go back to that sin. That he has an, he or she has an intention, that we make an intention that we will never go back to it. We may have been in the situation where we know we're doing something wrong, and we say astaghfirullah. But in our hearts, we know that we're going to do it tomorrow. We know we're going to do it next week. It's a good beginning. The ulama said, don't leave trying to do tawbah because you know you can't do it, uh, fulfill the whole thing. But if, if, as long as we know in our hearts that we're going to go back to it, tawbah has not occurred. We have to consciously